Despite all the chatter about secret love children, cold feet, and last-minute arguments, Prince Albert and Princess Charlene of Monaco made it to the altar in one piece for their lavish 2011 wedding. Before Prince Albert and Princess Charlene walked down the aisle, they enjoyed a customary period of engagement. As royal expert Arlene Prinsloo detailed in her book Charlene in Search of a Princess, they kept this phase as traditional as possible. Right after Albert popped the question, Charlene asked him if he'd remembered to ask her father, Mike Whitstock, for his permission. Caught off guard, Albert then scrambled to get in touch with his soon-to-be father-in-law. Thankfully, Whitstock was indeed supportive of the match. At the time that Albert called, he was gearing up to watch the South African soccer team play against France in the World Cup. As he recalled to the South African newspaper The Star, he called me just before kickoff and I wanted to get the whole thing over and done with. As soon as Albert secured Whitstock's permission, he slipped an engagement ring on Charlene's finger. And what an engagement ring it was, as it boasted a three-carat pear-cut diamond with several smaller diamonds flanking each side. Soon after Albert and Charlene got engaged, they naturally started to plan the royal wedding. And it had to be nothing short of spectacular, which is to say, bigger and better than anyone could possibly imagine. As Albert's best man, Chris Levine, divulged to People magazine, it just kind of got out of control with all of the events. Monaco, they just wanted to put on the biggest show they could, and I'm sure that at some point during that wild time, they said, oh my gosh, what did we let ourselves in for here? Regardless of whether or not Albert and Charlene were actually capable of planning a party of this scale, they decided to take on the challenge. And ultimately, that proved to be quite stressful. As Albert's sister, Princess Caroline, told People, there were huge arguments, from the shape of the wedding cake to those people saying, we'll give you the wedding cake. And I remember them saying, but we don't like this wedding cake, it just looks awful. It is a big preparation and it is a lot of work and it has been a lot of work. One of the most important parts of any wedding, royal or otherwise, is the reception, and the Grimaldis wanted theirs to be perfect. Albert and Charlene reportedly dedicated a tremendous amount of thought to their wedding menu, taking into consideration factors like national identity and sustainability. For one thing, they decided to hire local chef Alan Ducasse to prepare the dinner. They also requested that the menu be as green as possible. As Ducasse revealed to the Associated Press, we decided to do something sustainable, local, and ethical. Prince Albert is very interested in protecting the Mediterranean, its flora and fauna. It's something of an obsession. After much discussion, it was decided that Ducasse would source some of the ingredients directly from the Grimaldi's garden. As the chef later told The Hollywood Reporter, Albert and Charlene wanted to share a part of themselves with their guests, so we decided to use sustainable, local fish and vegetables from their garden, an extraction of tastes from the Mediterranean sea and land. Charlene also wanted her Zimbabwean roots to be reflected in the menu, so they also made sure to include some South African wine. For the design of her wedding gown, Princess Charlene collaborated with none other than Giorgio Armani. As she revealed to Vogue at the time, I've reached the point where I know what I like and what works. I'm starting to play with fresher, bolder, and more daring looks. Armani seemed open to the idea of Charlene embracing her own sense of style, and ultimately it didn't make sense to dress her in anything too derivative. As Armani explained to Vogue UK, the idea was to go for a completely modern look without an obvious sense of nostalgia or revivalism. I felt this was appropriate given that there would inevitably be comparisons with Princess Grace. And though such comparisons are of course a sign of admiration, each person has their own individual and unique style, and style is an expression of the times. Charlene and Armani ultimately dreamed up an off-the-shoulder gown that glittered beneath a layer of 20,000 mother-of-pearl teardrops and 40,000 Swarovski crystals. It was all tied together with a long white veil that would trail Charlene down the aisle. Oui. In addition to the fun of designing her gown, Charlene was also able to enjoy a blowout bachelorette party in New York City, which had a risque leather and lace theme. Her two maids of honor got to dress her up in outfits that reflected this theme. Testing the bounds of what was appropriate for a soon-to-be royal, they sent Charlene to her party in a black leather corset designed by Anne Fontaine. They paired this revealing top with a tight pair of pants for a scandalously sexy look. Naturally, though, the night was about more than just a rebellious black outfit, as it was also a celebration of Charlene's last days as a commoner. She kicked off the evening with dinner at the Lion, and then she headed to Cipriani downtown for music and dancing. Vogue trailed the party all evening long and noted that it was in some ways typical of other bachelorette parties for brides of Charlene's age. After all, she didn't hesitate to party the night away, tequila shots and all. Still, there were moments when her royal status was clear, thanks to a guest list that included big names like Carolina Kirkova and Demi Moore. 
Even as Princess Charlene was getting ready to join one of Europe's most famous families, there were whispers that she wasn't actually going to go through with it. According to the gossip mill, Prince Albert's Playboy past had supposedly become too much for her to bear. As some royal watchers may remember, the prince used to have a reputation for dating famous women like Brooke Shields and French actress Catherine Alrique. And he also had two children out of wedlock. Right before the royal wedding, the French newspaper Le Journal du Dimanche claimed that the prince's past was catching up to him and that Charlene began rethinking their relationship after hearing rumors that he'd fathered another royal love child. One advisor to a Monegasque parliamentarian even claimed, we are talking about a hidden child, but the whole issue would be to know if he is over five years old, because Charlene and Albert have officially been together for five years. The palace had strenuously denied the reports in French media. As if rumors of a royal love child weren't bad enough, the European press also printed reports claiming that Princess Charlene had tried to escape Monaco before the wedding. The French magazine L'Express was the first to break the story, which claimed that Charlene had purchased a one-way ticket back to South Africa after discovering some less-than-acceptable news about her groom. The magazine also reported that while Charlene was headed to the airport, she was intercepted by a group of police officers who confiscated her passport. Within days, another French outlet, Le the Journal du Dimanche claimed to have confirmed these rumors while also stating that Charlene had attempted to leave Monaco twice before. She supposedly first tried to leave in May when she went to Paris to try on her wedding dress and tried to hide in the South African embassy. Later, she apparently attempted to return to her home country during the Formula One Grand Prix race. Although this story may sound unbelievable, it's worth noting that L'Express tends to be a reputable source. As the rumors raged on, the people closest to Albert and Charlene grew indignant. Within days, both the groom and the bride gave their respective spokespeople permission to speak out against the claims of a potential third love child. Albert's lawyer, Terry Lacoste, vehemently denied the existence of any secret kids whatsoever. As he insisted to Reuters, I was just with the princess and Charlene Whitstock in Paris three days ago, and I can promise you everything is fine. Charlene's father, Mike Whitstock, also went on the record to defend his daughter's relationship as he said during an appearance on South African radio. I heard about this rumor for the first time this morning and I'm very surprised. The only thing I can think it was is that Charlene took her mom to Paris on Monday to get shoes and a hat for the wedding and that's the only time she was anywhere near an airplane and she was there for the day and back. For the moment everything has been, you know, on the tar we're on target for, for most of everything that's mm -hmm. been going on. And as if dealing with the gossip mill wasn't stressful enough, Princess Charlene may have also had an argument with Princess Caroline leading up to her big day. Rumor has it that a South African photographer named David Crichton saw them fighting before the wedding. According to his account, the drama started when it became clear that Prince Albert wanted Charlene to wear a ring that had once belonged to his mother, Princess Grace Kelly. Caroline supposedly felt that this gift was unfair. After all, she was Grace's oldest daughter. Although Crichton claimed to get the princess's heated verbal exchange on camera, he never handed the footage over to the press. When the South African newspaper Rapport expressed interest in viewing the video, he claimed that he could no longer produce it, and also said, The palace wants to buy my silence. That's why I haven't been able to send the video to the papers. Naturally, Charlene's representatives were quick to discredit the story, and her father Mike Whitstock told Rapport, I don't know where this guy is getting his allegations from. In light of all of the negative press surrounding her wedding, Princess Charlene grew increasingly nervous. On the morning before the ceremony, she was supposed to work with photographer Julian Lennon to get some pre-wedding pictures. But when Lennon arrived at Charlene's hotel room, she was apparently a total mess. As he recalled to People magazine, I could feel her bridal nerves. Charlene was reportedly so overwhelmed with everything that was going on that she asked Lennon to go away, insisting that she wasn't up to having any photos taken. But as a longtime friend of hers, he tried to talk her down. As he told her, let me photograph you. We've so little time left and this will happen only once in our lives. Let me capture these moments for you, for all of us. Ultimately, Charlene agreed to sit for the photos, and the final results turned out beautifully. However, she reportedly remained tense the entire morning before her wedding and during the ceremony as well. Looking back on that day, she told People, I think it's impossible for someone on the outside to understand how awful, how much pressure there was for both Albert and me. Enormous. You wouldn't believe it. The crowds had followed the couple all along along the route, and their new princess rewarded them all with a kiss. 
Although Albert and Charlene endured a lot of stress leading up to their wedding, they tried to make the event as special as possible. To commemorate Charlene's transformation from a commoner to a princess, Albert purchased some expensive jewelry. He even commissioned a bespoke piece known as the Ocean Tiara from Van Cleef and Arpels to make his bride shine. Albert reportedly wanted to buy Charlene a piece of custom-made jewelry that would reflect her past as an Olympic swimmer. Thus, the Ocean Tiara was conceived with an aquatic theme in mind. Using 1,200 stones, including diamonds and sapphires of different shades of blue, jewelers were able to create a piece that looked like moving water. It was also far more than just a tiara, as it can transform into a stunning necklace on occasions that don't require the formality of a headpiece. Additionally, Albert gave Charlene a rose gold necklace featuring over 1,200 diamonds and six extraordinary pearls that were dubbed the Infinite Cascade Necklace. And if they weren't already chic enough, the prince also bestowed a one-of-a-kind aigret upon his new wife. Designed to resemble ocean spray, the headpiece gave Charlene an even greater air of oceanic elegance.